Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Girl, real talk. This whole it's a new year, time to reinvent myself trash is not the vibe for 2024. You can find someone who loves you for you, as you are. You don't need to read a stack of self-help books, only eat sad salads, or like start meditating at 5 a.m. to be ready for dating. So yeah, my advice is to download Bumble and find someone who embraces you the way you are right now. Let me know how it goes. The Garden of Eden. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. At 1.40 a.m. on Monday, September 2, 2002, Los Angeles PD and firefighters received a call for a vehicle on fire at 11600 Woodbridge Street. It was a normally affluent, even sleepy area of Studio City in the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. As they approached, officials were shocked to encounter a Mercedes SUV engulfed in flames and quickly began extinguishing the fire. Through the smoke, firefighters began to see inside of the car making out two bodies, bodies riddled with bullet wounds. The men inside were Michael Tardio and Christopher Monsoon, best friends whose perplexing murders would include Playboy centerfolds, famous jewels, a man named Mr. Big, and a Hollywood Ponzi scheme. Today, we're talking about the mysterious homicides of Michael Tardio and Christopher Monsoon. 35-year-old Michael Tardio was living the life. Having moved from New York to L.A. in 1998, the 35-year-old was a model, supplementing his income with a steady gig as a doorman at the Garden of Eden, at the time Hollywood's hottest nightclub on 7080 Hollywood Boulevard. His best friend was 31-year-old actor Christopher Monsoon, who had his own side hustle, running his family's storage unit business. Quote, both young men came from successful families, said L.A. Times crime reporter Andrew Blankstein. Michael Tardio, He's kind of living the fast life. While they were up for a party, for sure, these best friends were also clean-cut, responsible, and considerate, and genuinely pretty down-to-earth. Which is why when their bodies were found half-burned and shot execution-style in Michael's Mercedes, parked in an upper-class and quiet part of the valley, it was so shocking. Investigator Bill Cox recalls how the scene was brutal and frustrating— Quote, there was no identifiable fingerprints found on there. There was no really usable evidence, he says. None of the people that lived in the neighborhood had heard any shots at all. Because of this, the theory formed that the best friends were shot somewhere else, and then brought to Studio City, placed in the car, and the car was later lit on fire. As the word got out, investigators and friends wondered who would do this to Michael and Chris. But they loved the club scene, and investigators surmised that their circles might have had their fair share of sketchy individuals. But still, the two guys didn't roll that deep with people that they didn't trust. As Cox and the LAPD dug into the men's backgrounds, they realized that they had a lot more going on under the surface, starting with Michael's love life. Michael Tardio's girlfriend was a woman by the name of Sandy Bentley. She was 5'9", blonde, a model, but not just any model. She was half of the famed Bentley twins. With her sister Amanda, Sandy had become a minor celebrity after she graced the May 2000 cover of Playboy. 
Not only that, between 1999 and 2000, they had a stint, collectively, as Hugh Hefner's live-in girlfriends at the Playboy Mansion. Sandy and Amanda had also done TV guest spots on Sex and the City, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and Two and a Half Men, mostly playing bubbly party girls. Like Michael, Sandy Bentley was also popular, well-liked, nice to everyone, and with her own sketchy dating history. In the summer of 1999, far before she got together with Michael, Sandy was introduced to a Wall Street millionaire named Mark Yagala and slowly began cheating on her then-boyfriend, Hugh Hefner, with the five-foot-tall millionaire. Quote, I was looking for the ultimate trophy, Yagala said of his relationship with Bentley. I stole her from Hugh Hefner, the ultimate heterosexual icon. To know why this made Mark Yagala so proud, you have to know where he came from. The short, painfully nerdy Pennsylvanian considered himself undesirable and became obsessed with Wall Street, Well, mostly making lots of money off of Wall Street. Yagala says he made $100,000 trading stocks while in high school, and millions more with his own hedge funds. But as he got older and began making more money, he began getting the power that comes from it, and he was introduced to sex. It, like money, became an insatiable want, and then an all-consuming addiction. Quote, As I was making money, it started with prostitutes, he says sometimes three, four different girls a day. Yagala's compulsion for sexual gratification led him to Michelle Braun, known in the 90s as the Sex Queen of L.A., for her website called Nisi's Girls. I think it's Nisi's Girls. It might be Nikki's Girls, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Nisi's Girls offered famous or famous-ish women, actors, models, porn stars, penthouse pets, playboy playmates, and the like, to wealthy men. Notably, Tiger Woods often patronized the site. And of course, Mark Yagala. He'd spend anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000 for a date from Nisi's Girls. Said Michelle Braun, quote, I was arguably the most successful madam in the history of the world. Mark had a huge appetite for women. He would have a girl every day of the week if he could. So, Yagala was introduced by another playmate to Sandy, and he felt like he had hit the jackpot. Quote, all the other girls were gold diggers, but Sandy was an educated gold digger. She was the most expensive girl I've ever met in my life. Yagala was smitten and also insanely proud of his new girlfriend, and he did whatever it took to make her happy, which included buying her expensive, very expensive jewelry. Not just like cute little diamond earrings or anything. No, 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 no. To show he cared, Yagala bought Sandy a $150,000 necklace and earring set two Rolexes, diamond rings, even a ruby and diamond necklace that was the exact copy that Richard Gere gave to Julia Roberts in the movie Pretty Woman, Sandy's favorite movie. At the time, the ruby and diamond necklace was valued at a quarter million dollars. Yagala said in an interview with 48 Hours that he just wanted to make Sandy happy, and jewelry, well, it made her very, very happy. Along with furs, cars, and jewelry, during their 13-month relationship, Yagala spent about $3 million buying and redecorating a house for Sandy in Las Vegas. When he looks back, Yagala said that he spent about, drumroll, $7 million on his girlfriend in a little over a year. So, how did he pull it off? That's the fun and illegal part. Taking money from clients and running a chaotic Ponzi scheme, embezzling millions of dollars from investors, using their funds to fuel his lavish lifestyle. But the spending, of course, got out of control, and soon he owed a brokerage firm over $7 million and had bounced checks to them. Says Yagala, quote, I dug such a deep hole, 40 or 50 million, that I could not get myself out of it. But, despite a mutual love language of, like, insanely expensive things and lifestyles, the relationship between Sandy and Yagala didn't last. Quote, Playmates, porn stars, the list was endless, Yagala explains. I just became a sex-crazed maniac. That, and of course, being an absolute criminal, well, Sandy's patience wore thin. But soon after they broke up, Sandy met Michael Tardio at the Garden of Eden, Less of a maniac, more of a regular human with regular expenses and expenditures, but she did take her gifts from Yagala with her. 
In fact, after Sandy left Yagala, Hugh Hefner, Yagala, and the Bentley twins were all spotted at the Garden of Eden. So, of course, circling back to the investigation, investigators centered their whole premise of who might have done this around the club, looking there to see if there might be any kind of connections between Sandy Bentley's interconnected party-fueled romantic history and Michael Tardio's murder. While they didn't find any obvious connection, investigators began to realize it was likely that there was one, that there was bound to be a connection between Sandy's fancy jewelry and Michael Tardio and Chris Monsoon's murder. This idea was rooted in his work as a bouncer at the Garden of Eden. First, when Michael and Sandy got together, it was a big thing. Sandy, while maybe a manipulator in some respects, seemed to really care for Michael. Quote, Sandy did care a lot about Michael Tardio, Cox said in an interview. She really did. And along with all of the glamour and celebrity of the club, a seedier element was also drawn to the Garden of Eden. Of course. Detectives started focusing on that, really focusing in as they investigated deeper into Michael Tardio's life. Detective Cox had a feeling that a clubgoer was responsible for the double murder. They just didn't know who that person was. But they did have a plan. More after the break. Ha! Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Girl, real talk. This whole it's a new year, time to reinvent myself trash is not the vibe for 2024. You can find someone who loves you for you as you are. You don't need to read a stack of self-help books, only eat sad salads, or like start meditating at 5 a.m. to be ready for dating. So yeah, my advice is to download Bumble and find someone who embraces you the way you are right now. Let me know how it goes. Hi, hello. How are you? Hello. Howdy. How, how, how we doing? How we doing out there externally, internally, emotionally? intuitively, physically, intellectually, what I miss, all of it. Financially is the most important. <laughs> Financially, I'm sorry, yes. That too, I suppose, that's important. I found out I'm taking a flight and I have the A priority. So like the first to board and it's because my sister had extra points. She flies yeah, a lot. She uh, gave you some of her Yeah, stuff. yeah. She's like, I have to use it or lose it. And I was like, Use I'll it. take it. And then I think there's a priority going through TSA and, and all that. Oh, shit. Um, Somebody is fucking VIP over here. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And uh, I was like, huh, no first class? That's it? What kind of family member are you? Yeah. Poor. Damn. Damn. What are you flying? JetBlue. JetBlue. Don't usually fly JetBlue, I would say. I'm more of a Delta gal myself, but I wish you all the best in your new life. Well, I want to wish the best to anyone who's listening, spreading the good word of Ghost Town. Thank you. We appreciate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm taking a nonstop flight. I'm also going to be nonstop thinking about our government. <laughs> good. That's good. Coming in with their neck pillow noise-canceling headphones, big old bottle of Fiji. It was $14. <laughs> they don't care. No, they got to hydrate. Ashley Matson. Hello. Rolling in with a few books from the bookstore. Mm. 
I said I was going to read a book a month. Never did it. Going to start now. <laughs> a stack of books. Love it. Ah, oh, bless. Cat Joselle. Hello. And buying up the whole row. <laughs> this person's like, I want the whole row and I have that money. Charlie Gilbert. Hello. Your pin is on the way. And our governor, who, as we speak, probably is in a private jet. Yeah, I don't even have like, anything to say she's about like, what it. What is all this? She doesn't even know what you're talking about. She doesn't know what jokes you're making because she's so above it. She's, she's like, like, what, l- neck pillows? L- l- little what? tray that you pull down <laughs> and put Rose? your ugly little biscotti cookies on it? <laughs> Not for her. No. Already has it all. And deserves it all. Mm-hmm, Our mm-hmm. governor, Avian Noble. Noble. <laughs> that was a nice slow burn. I liked it. We have one Apple Podcast review. <laughs> I actually cleared this with Rebecca. <laughs> she did. He was like, we have one. And he read it to me. And I was like, he, you you played it like it was really like the worst thing I could hear. And it's it's not. It's not. It's to be expected, honestly. I'm an idiot. Ms. Malaprop. Three stars. Surprise, surprise. She actually said, quote, for all extensive purposes, end quote. Plus, rein that drunk guy in a little. That's from Narcotic 1958 in the US of A. Mm. Guilty as charged, you know. Guilty as charged, I say very stupid things. Generally, Jason will cut out the most egregious and the stupidest things. Every once in a while, though, I'm in the zone and I don't know what I'm saying. You're reading, you're interacting, you're trying to talk through something intense. And then I say stupid shit. It's true. It's true. It's accurate. And you have a MFA, right? An MFA. So exactly. Right? Case closed. Uh, I probably have, I don't know, what would you say, if you had to get two drinks a year top maybe three yeah i would say you have one drink every five to six months yeah yes and i had my first drink at 33 so not a big drinker never have been continue not to be i don't know how that makes me a the drunk guy oh is that in reference to you or am I talking about some yeah, weird? No, that's about? me. Plus, oh. plus, rain that drunk guy in a little. Oh, I thought I said that in an episode. Gotcha. No. Yeah. Also, no. if I were to guess any substance that you would be on at any given time, alcohol would be pretty far down on the list. Yeah. But I, I have lots of follow up questions about you not having your first drink till you were thirty three, which I think we've talked about. But you know, every once in a while, you got to let loose. Yeah. And get I reined mean, in. Both those things. 33, Jesus, you know, put it together. Yeah, that's why. It's a beautiful thing. So thanks for that review. Mm -hmm. If you have a, I don't know, if you want to just speculate on substances we may or may not be on, uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave a review or Spotify or wherever, wherever you're listening, Stitcher. I mean, doesn't your ego want like your review like, discuss and like really it's like a built-in way that you're going to affect someone is if you leave a review because we will pour over it we will sweat it we will dissect it we promise you that do it yeah we're treating you as a an unpaid focus group (laughs) exactly how's that own us let yourself do that so you want to get back into it yeah let's go back to just down the street in a little place called Hollywood, California. LAPD investigators believed ex-Playboy playmate Sandy Bentley schemed with her nightclub bouncer boyfriend Michael Tardio to sell some of Yagala's gifts to Sandy under the table to get some quick and substantial cash. They turned to club clientele to help them. Not the upstanding ones, of course, but the dicier ones. Sandy and Michael were both known for a lot of things, but their street smarts were not one of them. A bit naive into what they might have gotten themselves into, likely they sold the jewels to the wrong person. Perhaps a very dangerous person. Mark Yagala was, of course, the police's first suspect, but he had an ironclad alibi that nobody could refute. 
At the time, the guy was in prison after pleading guilty to charges related to his massive Ponzi scheme. Sandy Bentley was busy, involved in both Yagala's case and the homicide investigation for her boyfriend's murder. It was not a fun place to be, I would imagine, and she was already paying the price of her affiliations. Part of Yagala's investigation revolved around the gifts he lavished on Sandy Bentley, and eventually she had to hand over the house, jewelry, her cars, pretty much everything of value that she had which would be the reason she would have turned to Michael to help unload some of her expensive assets. According to a surveillance video, this theory proved correct. Sandy is handing off some items to Michael at her Las Vegas mansion the week the two allegedly sold the pretty woman necklace. It's estimated that Michael Tardio and Sandy Bentley made off with nearly $1 million in jewels and furs that day. When the court-appointed liquidator enters Sandy's home, the drawer that she used for safekeeping her jewels had just a couple of loose bracelets. Sandy told them, sadly, that everything had been stolen. But of course, she knew that they were on their way to be sold. Now I know what you're thinking. Who would have had that kind of money to buy that kind of jewelry? Enter Linda Kim, an international weapons broker who, back in 2000, was the central figure in a sex and bribery scandal that nearly dismantled the South Korean government. Yes. Two years later, Michael Tardio came to her at the hotel she owned in L.A. with a box of very high-quality jewelry. Kim knew that something was off in the sale, so she declined the offer. But by this time, lots of people knew about the jewelry. Again, Michael and Sandy did not have any cool and tried to pawn the stuff on anyone who might listen, especially around the Garden of Eden. But beyond selling jewelry, a substantial and concrete suspect to the double homicide is nowhere on the horizon. The families of Michael Tardio and Christopher Monsoon even made a public plea for help. And the million dollars worth of jewels that had disappeared? It was completely gone. But investigators did find Michael Tardio's cell phone. The records show that Sandy is talking to Michael just moments before his murder. Quote, when the investigators brought her in a day or so after the murder, she denied the fact that they were out selling jewelry, Cox explains. Sandy wasn't really cooperative. Sandy was out to protect herself. But Sandy Bentley eventually agreed to cooperate in exchange for not being prosecuted for making off with the jewelry. This is why we know a lot of this stuff about the case, about their plans to sell the jewelry, about the drawer that was empty, etc. Bentley admitted to cops that she and Michael Tardio planned to cash in the jewels and that he had finally found a buyer at the Garden of Eden. Quote, Michael Tardio had been talking to a guy at the nightclub and the person said he knew someone who was interested in the jewelry. So Michael Tardio asked to set up a meeting, says Cox. It was with a mysterious man known as Mr. Big. Sandy said the deal got set up for Labor Day weekend, September 1st, 2002. Tardio rented a black Mercedes SUV for the occasion to look himself like a big power player. But despite being naive, Tardio might have known the danger he was in. According to Linda Kim, Tardio visited her a second time just hours before the murder, hoping she would reconsider buying the jewels. Kim again said no, sensing the jewelry had, quote, bad energy. Tardio also asked a Hollywood stuntman pal to serve as his muscle for the deal. The stuntman, not into it, politely declined, so he called in a sure thing his best friend, Chris Monsoon. Quote, Christopher Monsoon is really the tragedy in this case, in the sense that he was a loyal friend, Blankenstein says. He wanted to be there to make sure nothing happened to his friend. Finally, at around 9.30 p.m., Tardio, Monsoon, and a box full of jewelry set out to a restaurant on Sunset, where investigators believed they met up with Mr. Big. Then the three headed up into the Hollywood Hills. At 11.30 p.m., Sandy Bentley made her last call to Michael Tardio. Michael tells Sandy, quote, Hey, we're driving through the Mount Olympus area, Cox says. And that was the last conversation that she had with him. Less than two hours later, Tardio and Monsoon would be dead, their rental car driven to the valley and unceremoniously set on fire. So who is Mr. Big? We still don't know. But Sandy Bentley might have had the biggest clue. In her later conversations with investigators, she says Michael gave her a phone number right before he left to meet Mr. Big, telling her to call the number if anything happened to him. The person whose number Sandy had, according to Cox, has been interviewed and surveyed many a time. 
quote, there's been a lot of pressure put on this person of interest, says Cox. His name was Michael Jacobs, a convicted felon who had connected Tardio to Mr. Big. In the hours before the killings, calls were made between the cell phones of Michael Tardio and Michael Jacobs multiple times, and Jacobs' cell phone showed activity in the area where Tardio and Monsoon met Mr. Big, before they headed up into the Hollywood Hills. Jacobs' cell phone also shows activity in the area where the bodies were found inside of the burning car. At the time of the murders, Jacobs was questioned extensively by police, but they never had enough evidence to charge him. And the investigation just stalled. And then grew cold. Sandy Bentley moved on, got married, had children. Mark Yagala is still paying off the many people that he scammed. And this case, the case of Michael Tardio and Christopher Monsoon, still remains unsolved. In 2012, the Los Angeles City Council renewed a $75,000 reward for information leading to a conviction in the case. But still, no leads to further figuring out the identity of Mr. Big occurred. Cox believes this case could be solved, but somebody needs to come forward. Michael Tardio and especially Christopher Monsoon got caught up with the wrong people and paid a sad price. Their families, of course, still feel the loss and are baffled by the case's odd twists and turns. Quote, here's my brother, who dies in a very kind of murky situation, who by and large was a really good guy, said Michael's older brother, Neil Tardio Jr. of Los Angeles. He continues... If they made a movie out of this, no one would believe it. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. I'm Otis Gyre, and where I'm from, we don't do nice bedtime stories. If that's what you were expecting, you're in the wrong place. However, if it's terrifying tales you're after, well then, I've got just the thing for you. Here on Scary Stories Told in the Dark, we bring you immersive original tales about Malicious monsters, deadly deals with demons, and the gruesomely grotesque. With short stories from published horror authors to accomplished indie creepypasta authors, which are brought to life through our eerily haunting sound design and narration from yours truly, you're guaranteed to hear the tales that make your skin crawl and your palms sweat. So, dive into the cosmically creepy with us by subscribing to Scary Stories Told in the Dark on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Get comfortable, settle in, turn off the lights, (laughs) if you dare. Your night is about to get a whole lot darker. (laughs) Ha 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 ha!